hear me. I just don't know everybody out there in cyberspace. of Israel and Judah in particular. Thank you, brother. Um, and the reason why it's weeping number one, it's weeping because he sees judgment coming. Number two, he's weeping because of the sin of the people that makes the judgment necessary. And can I say today in America... Uh, we ought to be weeping for our nation and weeping for our people. Uh, Jesus, when he was walking uh, from the place of judgment to Calvary, uh, he saw some women there weeping, and he said, Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and weep for your children. You know, as I think about what our nation is going through and is going to, more importantly, uh, it ought to bring some tears to our eyes about what our children are going to face and our grandchildren. However, <clears throat> along with the burden of the, of the coming judgment, Jeremiah also stands as a beacon of hope. And that even though judgment was coming, God was still God, and his word was still true, and his power was just the same. And uh, we serve the same God that Jeremiah served. We serve the same God that Noah served. We serve the same God that Abraham served. We, same the, we serve the same God that, uh, that Elijah served, and Paul, and Timothy, and the apostle John, and D.L. Moody, and Charles Spurgeon, and Charles Wesley, and George Whitfield, all of those men and many ladies served the same God that we serve today. And he is not hurting. He's not worrying. He's not uh, at the end of his rope. Everything's going exactly as he has it planned. And uh, I take joy in that. And uh, I thank God for that. I'm glad that God has chosen me and chosen us to be lights at a very dark time. What an opportunity we have for the Lord. And you say, well, preacher, it's getting harder. I know it's getting harder because it's getting darker. Uh, but in the dark, just a small light can make such a difference. And uh, I think about those, those saints over in Afghanistan. Uh, they are, there's Christians, our brothers and sisters, who are being martyred in these days, probably some today, died for the cause of Christ. And um, I was reading one report. Uh, someone said that they were giving, they were, they were talking to one of the Christians in Afghanistan, and they were, uh, this person, it was a woman on the phone relaying what or maybe it was over text, I don't know, but relaying to them how God's grace has been so sufficient to them that they have, they have discovered a level of power and fellowship with God that they'd never experienced before. And during the course of their conversation, uh, their group was, was, uh, uh, was discovered by the Taliban. And there was shooting, there was death. I don't know how many died or what happened. Uh, but 
in the moment that they were thanking and they were praising God. They were praising God for the opportunity to stand for him in these days. Hey, l- listen, that's a level that we have not achieved because we've had it so good. Well, listen, listen, things are heating up. And it's going to start costing us to follow Christ. And, uh, and so I believe that the book of Jeremiah is very relevant to our day. And it's very present. And as we look into it this week, if the Lord should lead us to continue looking in this book, I believe that it will help us. Now, I'm just going to lay some groundwork this, this afternoon. I realize the time. I realize the full stomachs, but I also realize that we're soft as Americans. And we need need some toughening up, amen? Now, I don't know if the Lord will use me this week to toughen us up or not, uh, but I do know that God's word is important, amen? It's more important than the food we just ate. It's more important than the nap that we're longing for, amen? And so uh, let's give our undivided attention to the word of God. I've given you lots of time to find the book of Jeremiah. And uh, so stand with me if you're able, and uh, we'll read the first ten verses of this chapter to begin. Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, The words of Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, Thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you, God, for your spirit. Lord, please speak to our hearts in this time that we have. Help us to be obedient to your spirit. Help us to be attentive to your spirit. Lord, I pray if there's someone here unsaved, Lord, I pray they'd see that their time is short, that they need to be born again. Help them to trust you. Father, I pray for your people, those of us who have trusted Christ, we're your children. Uh, God, I pray that you would help us to see what our role is in these last days. Help us to stand and remain faithful unto death or unto the coming uh, of your Son. And uh, Lord, we pray in all things that you would receive glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. In this uh, introduction to the book of Jeremiah, I want to look at just a few things from this first chapter. Jeremiah, the name, uh, actually uh, is often said to mean God will raise or God will elevate. However, as I began digging into the root of this name, uh, it, uh, uh, it, it actually means God will loose or loosen. God will throw. And um, uh, it's, it's a name not of, not of blessing. It's a name of judgment, uh, which fits the, the, the call on Jeremiah's life because God raised up Jeremiah 
to alert his people of coming judgment. Uh, because of their sin, because they had strayed against the Lord, if you notice in verse number 16, look what he says in chapter 1, verse 16, I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and burned incense unto other gods and worshiped the works of their own hands. That is the United States of America. We have forsaken God. We've forgotten where our blessings came from and who our blesser was and is. We've forsaken him. We have, uh, we have burned incense on other, other gods. You say, what does that mean? Well, it's making a sacrifice. That's what they're doing. They're using their means. They're spending their money. And they're spending it on something that, that does not matter and something that will not help. There are many gods in America today, little g, gods who, who take up the time and the energy and the money and the commitment of God's people. It's spiritual adultery, and it's being committed by God's people all across this land. Burned incense unto other gods, worship the works of of their own hands. That is what we are living in. It's, it's sad to see people walk in and they've got these in their hands and they cannot even set down their phone for an hour or an hour and a half to hear from heaven. And we wonder why God's nowhere to be found. Hang up your phone. Listen to God. Listen to God's word. This nation is going to hell in a handbasket, and we can't even take time to hear from heaven. I'm saying we need God. We need God. He says they're worshiping the works of their own hands. Many devices uh, we have come up with in these days. It seems like the more easily our lives are, are uh, conducted, the further we get away from God. And here in Jeremiah's day, God called out Jeremiah for a purpose. And we read of this in these first 10 verses. We read of the calling of, of Jeremiah and the purpose of that call. And he, he, he's very, uh, very succinct in giving us the purpose of his call in verse number 10. He says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms, to do what? To root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to throw down. Jeremiah's name makes a little more sense when we think about this. God will throw down. And he's called Jeremiah. He said, this is what I've called you to do. I've chosen you uh, to to pull down, to root out, to destroy, to throw down. But then he says, to build and to plant. You see, when God is in the business of pulling down, rooting out, it's so that he can bless at a later time. And uh, sometimes it takes a building being deconstructed before it can be reconstructed. And uh, that's, that's what God is saying to Jeremiah. He's saying, uh, what you've built here, what this nation has here, has become corrupt. And it is, it is falling apart from the inside out. And Jeremiah, I'm calling you, and your message is, God is going to tear this place down. He's going to burn it down. He's going to root it out. You know what I believe? If we want to see revival, we want to see the work of God in our lands and in our hearts, we're going to have to see this process of God rooting out some stuff in our lives that should not be there. God needs to get in there and root some of those things out. That means there's things in our hearts that have taken root that do not belong there. And when listen, when we get more attached to the things of this world than we do of the next, that's something that needs to get rooted out of our hearts. Anything that takes more time in your life than your God needs to be rooted out. You know, you know I, I used to think, 
And, and God is just beginning to teach me some of these things just in the last month. Pray without ceasing. I used to quote that with a little bit of a chuckle in my mind and in my heart. That's impossible. I know it says pray without ceasing, but come on. We got to work. We got to eat. I don't like when people pray without ceasing right before we eat. It's like, don't catch up on your prayer life at mealtime. Amen? So other times do that. that uh, you know, so I'm thinking, how do you pray without ceasing? God is just beginning to teach me of this being in the spirit of prayer all through the day. All through the day. Being in constant communication with God. You know, you can do that no matter what you're doing. What I found out is that prayer is the engine that drives us spiritually. If you're prayerless, you're powerless. Jeremiah is saying there's some things going to have to be rooted out. If we're spending more time on the things of this world than we are with our Lord, it needs to be rooted out. And he said, this is what I've called you for. Now, how would you like to be Jeremiah? What's your calling? Well, my calling is to tear stuff down. What are you going to tear down? This nation. Now, you know what we'd call him? We'd call him not a patriot. How dare you? You're going to tear down our nation? That's what God called him to do. That's what God sent him to do. See, our problem is we, we have elevated our nation above our God, not realizing that God is the one who made our nation blessed to begin with. And we've forsaken the one who has blessed us and it cannot stand. Now listen, th this, this is what, th this is the realization that God's brought to me reading through Jeremiah, and I'm not through with it, I'm almost through with it, but I'm not quite. We have it in our minds, and we think about revival. I think about, oh, it's either judgment or revival. You know what I'm reading in Jeremiah? Judgment for revival. Not judgment or revival, judgment for revival. God is too just to allow us to continue on our way unchecked and unpunished and unjudged. It's not a matter of if the Lord is going to judge the United States of America. It is a matter of when. Because judgment is coming. You, you, can, you can set aside your prayers of, Lord, please don't judge America. Because if God does not judge America, then the God of the Bible is not just. Judgment is coming. I see it on the horizon. If you don't see it, you've got your head in the sand. Judgment is coming to our nation. But that does not mean that our nation is without hope. We have it in our minds. Well, well we, we better have revival or there's going to be judgment. There's going to be judgment regardless. But how about responding properly to the judgment so that God can bring about a mighty work in his people? Jeremiah's message is twofold. Number one, it's a, uh, he's, he's calling upon God's people to respond properly to the coming judgment. And then the second part of it is he's calling upon them to have proper conduct while in captivity in Babylon. So it's, it's in two parts. It's it's okay. Let me let me give you some instructions. The the judgment is coming. 
This is how you should respond to the judgment. And then part of their judgment, uh, the, the large part of their judgment was they're going to be carried into captivity into Babylon. And you know what he's saying? Your job doesn't stop once the city falls. You've got a responsibility to your God, even in Babylon. Now, our, our nation is fastly becoming Babylon in its morals and in its conduct and in its religion. We need to know how we are to respond. We're looking for the, we're looking for the rapture. Amen? I, now, I'm looking for revival, too. Uh, you know, I had a friend of mine say, we're, we shouldn't be praying for revival. We should be praying for the rapture. My response is, how come I can't pray for both? Amen? Why can't I pray for both? And uh, we, we don't know how long this is going to go before we get the upper call. Amen? And so we need to know from God's word how we ought to live in this dark world. What God expects from us. Our problem is as believers, as Christians, we've gotten so used to looking at what we expect from God that we've forgotten and, and we've laid aside what God expects from us. And can I say, no matter what, what kind of situation we find ourselves in, what kind of state of our, of our world that we find ourselves in, the truths of God's word abide. They are lasting. They, the, the, listen, they'll take you through whatever you are living in, in this world, whatever condition, whatever situation. God's word and God's commands are eternal. There is, in the book of Jeremiah, no message of hope to escape judgment. It's not. It's not there. I know this is not what we like to hear. Now give us something positive. Give you something upbeat. Well, I'm positive that judgment's coming. There's your positive message. There's nothing in this book that holds out hope that judgment will not come. However, there is the assurance all through the book that God will bless those that obey him and that one day he will restore and reestablish his people. Christian, why are we so concerned on the events, uh, our current events, when we understand how it ends. We know how it ends. We've read the back of the book, amen? We're coming back. Lord's going to set up his kingdom. We're going to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. So shall we ever be with the Lord. His kingdom, all the kingdoms of this world will be made uh, uh, the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. That's how it ends. And so we need to keep an eye on that and understand that even though in the short term things may not turn out the way we would like them to be, God's plan abides and remains. And there will come a day when he will restore and bless and reestablish. Now, though this message was directed to Judah... The message, I believe, resounds to us today. God does not change. He still rewards righteousness and punishes evil. You may say, well, this is just the book to the nation of Israel. It doesn't have anything to do with us. To that, I would say this. There's not a nation, biblically, in history that God did not bring judgment upon who strayed from his word. There's not one exception. You will not find one exception in all the Bible, or history for that matter, that God spared from judgment when they went against the word of God. Israel was punished many times over. One of the chief sins that Israel committed was shedding of innocent blood. 
and America is drowning in innocent blood. God will bring judgment. There were many prophets during Jeremiah's day and Isaiah's day and other prophets that kept trying to reassure the people. Judgment's not coming. Don't worry about that old, that old fuddy dud. You know, he just, he, everything's bad news to him. He's just a Debbie Downer, you know. And they would say, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord hadn't spoke by them. God brought judgment to them before the, he brought judgment to the people in most cases. Because even though it was a message that people wanted to hear, it was not the message they needed to hear. It wasn't the truth. Can I say this? We want revival. Understand that without truth, there could be no revival. There's coming a day, and Matthew 25 tells us about it, when God will bring the nations of the world before him in judgment. That means every nation in existence at that time will be judged by God. Why is it that we believe America will not be judged? We're fooling ourselves. Say, so what's the message, preacher? Well, I'm about done. I'm going to give you the message. I've got three, just three things I want to bring to our attention in regards to this book of Jeremiah as we get as we begin, number one, and I think you've got this point, judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. What will it look like? I don't know for sure. How will it affect me personally? I don't know, but I do know judgment's coming. Here's the question. Are you ready? Well, how can I be ready if I, don't know, if I don't know what's coming? The first thing you need to do to be ready for coming judgment is to receive Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior. If you have not done that, you must be born again. Judgment is coming. Not only the judgment of nations and judgment upon this earth, but beyond that, an eternal judgment. One day you will stand before God. And just as he's not going to give America a pass or Israel a pass or any other nation a pass of the judgment, he's not going to give you a pass. He's not going to judge you based on what you thought. He's going to judge you based on God's word. The Bible says the books will be opened. Another book will be opened, the book of life. And the, uh, you'll be judged out of those things that were written in the books. I believe with all my heart those books he's talking about there are the books of the Bible. Our lives are going to be judged by the word of God. But then that other book that's open is called the book of life. The Lamb's book of life. And whosoever was not found written in that book will be cast into the lake of fire. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. Judgment is coming. Are you ready for that? The second thing I want us to keep in mind as we look at Jeremiah is duty is awaiting us. Even though there's judgment coming, even though uh, the, the people are going to be taken into captivity, even though their lives are going to fall apart, still God has a job for Jeremiah and God has a job for us. He calls him here and he says, I've got a job for you. You need to root out. You need to pull down. You need to destroy. You need to throw down and then build and plant. You know, it would be a good thing of God's people if we would just take inventory of our lives and everything that needs to go, we get it gone. This week, why wait? Why put it off? Just, just get, get before God, uh, get in his word, get in prayer and say, God, reveal to me what needs to be rooted out of my life. I'll guarantee you there's something in your life that should not be there. And it's getting roots in there. What a blessed thing it'd be to just say, Lord, I'm tired of that, 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 
that, that weed that's rooted in my life. Lord, help me just to pluck it up, get rid of it, destroy it, and then you plant in my heart what you want for me. You plant in my life your calling for my life. Lord, I will do what you want me to do. Jeremiah here, he, he, he says, I'm just a child. I can't, I can't speak. I can't do this. I can't do that. He's got all his reasons why he's not able. And really, in our own strength, we are not able. But watch what the Lord does. Then the Lord, verse 9, put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. It's a blessed privilege to think that God could use our mouths to speak his words. And where God guides, he provides. Amen? What he calls us to do, he supplies us with the ability to do so. And here God says, listen, Jeremiah, I know. I know you say you're nothing. You say you're a child. I know your frame. I fashioned you. I formed you. I, I built you for this. And I will give you the strength to do my calling. Well, What's the use? We're going into captivity. What's the use? There's judgment. What's the use? They stole the election. What's the use? They got a pandemic going on. What's the use? I'll tell you what the use is. God has called us to stand for him in these days. There's a lot I do not understand. There's a lot I, I have no control over. I can't fix things. I like fixing things. It's what I like to do. Something's wrong. I want to fix it. You know what? We're up against things. We can't fix these things. And it's actually a blessing when we realize there are things beyond our control. There are things I can't do. I don't know. I don't understand. But this is what I do understand. God put his hand upon me. God put his words in my mouth. God gave me a calling. God gave me something to do. And by God's grace, I'm going to preach. I'm going to live. I'm going to serve God until I'm gone. That's what this world needs. It needs Christians who will stand in the power of God and live for Jesus. Not live for this world. Not get caught up in the things of this world. Judgment's coming but duty is awaiting. Are you willing? Are you willing to stand for the Lord? There's probably not much fanfare that's going to go along with it. There won't be much recognition. There will probably be suffering. No doubt there will be. Jeremiah had his share of suffering. He, he endured imprisonment. He endured ostracized, being ostracized and kicked out from, from society. He endured the, the ridicule, people making fun of him and all of those things. And eventually he was martyred. He died for the Lord. He died for his faith. You willing to do that for the Lord? Well, why not? He did it for you. Duty is awaiting. Are you willing? Let me say this. Last of all, grace, God's grace, is sufficient. Look what he says to, to Jeremiah here, and we'll, we'll leave with this. He tells him in verse 17, he said, Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made, this, made thee this day a defensed city, and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. 
He said, Jeremiah, if you open your mouth and you preach what I've given you to preach, you're going to make the people mad. You're going to make the priests mad. You're going to make the princes mad. You're going to make the prophets mad. You're going to make everybody mad. So mad that they're going to attack you. They're going to fight against you. They're going to try to overthrow you. But they're not going to be able to. Now, as I said, Jeremiah suffered. And eventually he was killed. You know what the Lord said? I'm going to be with you. And I'm going to sustain you until your job is done. And when your job's done, I'll receive you to, me, to myself. So what is the promise? If we stand for the Lord in these days of judgment that are coming, if we're faced with what they're, our brothers and sisters are being faced with in Afghanistan and other parts of the world right now, if that comes our way, what assurances do we have? You know, I can't promise my children that everything's going to be fine. They'll never be taken from me or they'll never suffer for the Lord. I can't promise them any of that. But this is one thing I can promise them. The Lord will be with you. I may not be able to be with them. But the Lord will be with them. If you'll stand for the truth and stand for the Lord in these days of judgment that are coming upon us, God's grace will be sufficient. Boy, they hated Jeremiah. They tried everything they could to shut him up. They even took his prophecy and burned it in the fire. Burned the originals. <gasps> what are we going to do? The originals are gone. God said, hey, let me give you my word again, just write these down again. There's no problem with God. No problem. See, what are problems to us? No problem to him. Judgment's coming. It's coming. Our duty awaits us. Will we, will we be faithful? And God's grace is sufficient. Whatever he calls you to do, he'll empower you to do. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Not a real upbeat message in many ways. Maybe not one that we expect for a revival meeting. God, these are unprecedented times we find ourselves in, in our lifetime. The devil's trying to rock us to sleep. He wants to make us feel like everything's just going to continue the way they always have. In short, Lord, we know he wants to catch us napping. He wants to catch us unprepared. He wants to cause us to be uncommitted. But Lord, we are not ignorant of his devices. We understand what his plan is through your word, through examples in scripture. And God, even though Jeremiah was unpopular in his day, he lived in a way that brought glory and honor to you. And he fulfilled his calling. And now these many, many, many years later, we're reading this prophecy that you gave him and we're being warned and instructed because a man was faithful to his calling. God, help us to be faithful. Help us to not lose faith in you. Help us to understand that you have a plan and that this is part of your plan. Help us to be thankful in everything as you instruct us to. 
Help us to see these things as not obstacles, but opportunities to glorify your name and to show forth your righteousness to a world that desperately needs it. God, help us to stand in these days. Help us to not be ashamed of you. Help us, Lord, to not be so caught up with the things of this world that we forget why we're here and forget what you've called us to do. Help us to not be as the heathen who have forsaken you and burned incense to idols and worship the works of their own hands. Very religious, but nowhere near God. Lord, I pray that our faith would be genuine and that our commitment to you would be unquestioned. God, help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.